All right, welcome to Creator Hardware. Today we're talking about budget ways to start your own home lab. First off, I gotta talk about my journey in home labbing. It was more of a somewhat professional endeavor because I am a YouTuber. I have a main channel that I produce three videos a week for, and I wanted a way to archive that footage in a way that made sense, not just random hard drives, you know, strewn all over the place. That's how I wound up there. So first thing we gotta talk about is of course, Raspberry Pis. They're relatively inexpensive. They're pretty powerful and you can do a lot of things with Raspberry Pis. I don't own a Raspberry Pi, so I can't really talk too heavily about using them. I've never owned one. It's not really part of what I do in my home lab, but can get you started and you can have a good bit of fun with them from friends that have played with them. eBay or you know your grandma's old PC. Cheap, easy way to start getting into home labbing. Go on eBay, you can get a basic X Windows computer with no hard drive for less than $100. Cheap, easy, it's got cooler, it's got a power supply. All you gotta do is add storage to it. You know, maybe even RAM, maybe but most of them come with RAM. So for a hundred bucks and a $50 hard drive, you can get into home labbing. And honestly, that's the path I would tell most people to go down is because they're super cheap and basically throwawayable. I mean, you know, it's a hundred dollars and, you know, buying a random hard drive somewhere and boom, you're up and running. You can do whatever you want to do. You're going to be limited to whatever that box is capable of handling as far as processing power, RAM, power supply, everything like that. So, I mean, but it's a great inexpensive way to get started. Let's talk a little bit more expensive an option, but a really good option. And that is getting a used Xeon and one of these Chinese motherboards. Now the system, off camera right here is my Linux box and that's what I used for it. That's, it's a Xeon, 64 gigabytes of ECC memory, uh, cheap power supply. It's a little bit more overkill than what you'd need, but in a 1660 Ti I had lying around. You can use that for a lot of things. And you know, you figure for less than $500 cheap case, cheap power supply, cheap GPU, and you can do a lot of stuff with a UZ on. So it's a very good option to get into home labbing for really not that much money. Now, another option that is, again, a step up, but I think has some really good advantages over to a lot of UZ ons, and that is going to a couple generations old processors. Now this is a 10th gen i7. It's going in my Proxmox server because I need more cores so I can do more stuff with it. But I started my Proxmox server with an i3 10th gen. Relatively inexpensive. Motherboards are a lot cheaper than they were back when 10th gen was, you know, the new stuff. If you go back a few generations, you know, my Unraid server is running a 3600 from AMD, there's a lot of deals in older hardware. You know, going on eBay and finding a couple year old 8700K, 7700K, and boom, you've got a good bit of cores to play around with. So just something to consider when you're looking at starting your home lab. And just, these are just budget options out there. I know as I stand in front of a water-cooled editing PC. <laughs> Honest assessment of the costs of home labbing is my Unraid server has in alone $1,200 worth of just hard drives. <laughs> so this is not a cheap hobby to get into, but it is a lot of fun. So hope you found this video helpful. As always, thanks for watching. This is Creator Hardware.